Jones, how are you gonna find that statue and all this junk? Marcus still thinks this chest belonged to Columbus. It's a genuine candlestick. It's a medieval gargoyle, or a good imitation. It's a copy of an Egyptian statue of Horus. It's a stone carving of Shiva. It's some kind of funeral urn. Poor Marcus. He thought this was a Maasai warrior. Oof! Label says unidentified pot shirts. Marcus thought potlatch Indians carved this. Looks like a movie prop to me. Looks like textiles from the Shamit collection. I don't need them, they're just textbooks. I think I've read them all. There's nothing of importance here. There's nothing of importance here. These books don't look familiar. Uh-oh. Better get that roof checked. A cheap copy of a Siamese idol. sample of bitumen. It's too slippery to walk up. It's a greasy old towel. I'll be. Here's what I've been searching for. Strange looking thing. I wonder where Marcus picked it up.
I'm back. Indy? You don't look at all well, Dr. Charles. Exploring our collections can be dangerous, Mr. Uh, what was your name again? Smith. Tell me, did you find a lock to match my key? You bet I did. Take a look. What are you waiting for? Let's open it. Why not? It's an obvious fake. You may think so, Doctor, but I believe we are opening a new chapter in history. My word, India, a small metal bead. Jewelry, perhaps? I still think it's a fake. Then you won't mind if I take it. Really, Mr. Smith? Stand back, gentlemen. I hope you've got a getaway car waiting. You'll need one. Hmm. What is Fritz? He got away. But we got his coat, Marcus. Hey, what's this? Klaus Kerner, huh? Good Lord, Indy, the man's some sort of agent from the Third Reich. What does the spy want for the Buddhist statue? <sighs> I lied, Marcus. I don't think it's a phony. I can't place the style, but it's old. Look what else our friend was carrying. An old copy of National Archaeology, and there you are in Iceland. Yeah, field supervisor for the Jastro expedition. My first real job. Who's the woman? Sophia Hapgood. She was my assistant. A spoiled rich kid from Boston, rebelling against her family. But where is she now? She gave up archaeology to become a psychic. How odd. You can say that again. Indy, Kerner found you. What if he finds her? We should warn the woman. You're right. I want to know more about that statue. You know, Marcus, the coldest year of my life was the one I spent in Iceland with Sophia. Hello there. The show sold out, sir. But... No seats, no standing room, no exceptions. Excuse me. Come back next week. Excuse me. Come back next week. Imagine the suckers who actually pay to see Sophia's Lost World lectures. Hmm, it's unlocked. This ain't no ticket office. I'm the fire inspector. What do you take me for, a moron? Wait a minute. Why won't you take no for an answer? I really need to talk to your star. That's what they all say, Mac. I've got to see her. She's the most wonderful woman. 
Don't kid around, pal. You're talking about my idol. No kidding. I think she's the greatest. Me too. There ain't something about her. Yeah, she's very smart. Smart? I'll say. You know what I really like? It's the way she... she... The way she makes things easy to understand? That's it. All that smart stuff seems so easy when I'm listening to her. Say, you're okay for a college boy. Come on in. Still beautiful, still impossible. Excuse me. Aha! You must be the new doorman. About time they got rid of Biff. He was such a pushover. I need to talk to that so-called psychic. It's Madame Sophia to us employees, fella. Excuse me. Take it easy and watch the show. Here, my friends, is Atlantis. As it might have appeared in its heyday. Glorious, prosperous, socially and technically advanced. Beyond our wildest dreams. 5,000 years ago, while everyone else still wore animal skins, the mighty spirits of Atlantis dared to build a city where knowledge and power were united in true happiness. Centuries later, the famous philosopher Plato wrote about it. He placed Atlantis on a continent out in the deep ocean and described how it was divided into three circular parts, such as you see here. Isn't she something? She can go on for hours. Excuse me. Shh. She's just coming to the exciting part. What befell the serene city? We may never know for sure. Was it the sea level, slowly creeping higher, or the earth itself, suddenly shifting? However it happened, panic must have gripped the citizens. On that fateful day when proud Atlantis sank beneath the waves. Or, perhaps it was a volcanic eruption, and something remains even now. On some questions, the great spirit who guides my thoughts, the all-seeing Nurab Sal, is silent. I've been through this a hundred times. The woman never stops. Excuse me. Yeah, what now? Isn't there something you'd rather be doing? Like what? Show business is my whole life! Don't you ever get bored? She does rattle on, but I've got a job to do. Excuse me. Yeah, what now? Don't you have any hobbies? Sure, I read. What if I give you something to walk away? A bribe? Who do you think you're talking to? Excuse me. Yeah, what now? Don't you ever read? Sure, it's a hobby of mine. What if I give you something to read? I might take a look. Here. Well, well, the late edition. I wonder if the Dodgers won. 
Watch the lights while I find out, okay? goes. And I still feel the presence of Atlantis through... Uh... May I present Nurab Sal, the great Atlantean god of... of... Deceit. Deceit. Thanks, Indy. Indiana Jones? You've got some nerve. Go back, you big jack-o'-lantern. Oh, great. Good night, folks. Come on, mister. I've got a few words to mince with you. I'd say it's about time. Oh, no! Looks like Kerner got here first. Stay put. No one here. Nor here either. Dr. Uberman, fantastic view. We found the treasure we see. That's the second time Kerner slipped away. What does a Nazi spy want with old statues? Have you seen the newspaper? Listen to this. Germans claim victory in worldwide race to smash the uranium atom. Chief scientist Dr. Hans Ubermann announces plan to harness new sources of energy for the Third Reich. So? Practical results are years away. Of course they are. That's why they're looking for the power of Atlantis. Be serious. I used to think you'd make a good scientist. Yet you've been concealing important artifacts. Artifacts such as archaeology has never seen. Huh. You're lucky I don't have you arrested. So what if I kept a few pieces for myself? Look for a small coppery bead under those clippings in my desk. What do you know? Kerner missed the grand prize. What? My necklace. Watch closely. The bead is made of auric calcum, the mystery metal first mentioned by Plato. Now I'll place it in the medallion's mouth. Did you see that? Yeah, creepy. Is your electric bill paid up? That was Nurab Sal. His spirit is close. I'm not interested in spiritual mumbo-jumbo. Suppose I gave this aura calcum business any credence, which I don't. Who knows where these beats really came from? Shh. I'm getting something. Nurab Sal speaks. He bids us find the... What? A, a book, yes. The Lost Dialogue of Plato. 
another fine myth. If Plato wrote it, later authors would have reported it. What if the Nazis have already found a copy? You ever think of that? Hmm. How did the Nazis get interested in Iceland? Antiquities dealers probably told them about me. Nice friends you have. Who's working there these days? Bjorn Heimdall, I believe. Maybe we should pay him a visit. What do you say? I thought you'd never ask. Looks like someone's still living here. Dr. Heimdall. Dr. Indiana Jones, I believe, and Madame Sophia Hapgood. This is my dig site now. Go away. Not feeling very friendly today, are we? I like solitude. It helps me think. I thought you were digging up Norse graves in Denmark. I was. Obviously, now I'm not. Doctor, what do you expect to find here? The secret of Hyperborea. That's what the Greeks called Iceland, you know. You've read how they sailed north to a fog-shrouded land, and how they never set foot upon it? Ha! After traveling thousands of miles, mere fog wouldn't turn them back. Some idiots claim they've ever tailed by ghosts. Puppycock! You know what actually stopped them, Sean? No, but I'm sure you're going to tell me. They were stopped by a force field put here by beings not of this earth. Hmm, that's fascinating, Doctor. Why do these beings show up here? I am convinced that these travelers came to Earth to form colonies like Atlantis, using Hyperborea as a spaceport. Up north here, we're close to the ether. It's a perfect landing site. So you completely discount the supernatural? Completely! If it's supernatural, you went. There are two people you might want to visit. Charles Sternhardt in Tikal, a shady fellow. But very clever. And Philippe Costa in the Azores Islands. As a researcher, he's a farce, but he's a sharp trader. Meanwhile, I've got an Atlantean artifact right in front of me. So what's the link between Hyperborea and Atlantis? Try the Yastro expedition, the one you're about to work on. Recently I saw pieces from it, pieces that are clearly Atlantean. I see. Somebody must have been selling them. Go ahead, blame it all on me. Where did you say those pieces come from? If it's artifacts of Atlantis you want, Dr. Sternhardt and Costa. What is this thing you're working on? The bronze eel here? Oh, it's a, probably a homing beacon for wayward spaceships. Soon I'll have it out of the ice. What is this eel artifact again? 
I already told you, it's a, a, an Atlantean lighthouse, I think. Have you ever heard of Plato's Lost Dialogue? Yes, there are rumors about such a book, but I've yet to see it. Talk to Sternhart and Costa. What was that about the Lost Dialogue? Talk to Sternhart and Costa. So long. Good luck, fellow believer. Listen. Yes? I think the good doctor's got frostbite of the brain. I'll say, spaceport my eye. Cold enough for you? Even colder than my feelings towards you, Jones. What do we do now? Let's find Costa and Sternhart. <laughs>